The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. I want to give you what I felt like God laid on my heart about this year's fast. Second Kings chapter 13. And he said, open the east window, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Apex till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take arrows. So he took them, and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. It's interesting when you notice also verse 16 where he says that he, he said, Put your hand on the bow. And he said in verse 16, he put his hands on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. These scriptures may not make a lot of sense to you concerning the theme of fasting that we're talking about right now, but I want to tie them in in a way that I felt like uh, the Lord would have me share today. I'm preaching today on fasting for complete victory. Pa fasting for complete victory in your life. Victory is when you completely overcome the enemy. It is the cutting off of Goliath's head. It is the dancing on the grave of your enemy. It is not coexisting with partial victory, but complete victory means what the Scripture said Jesus' assignment was. He said that I came to destroy the works of the devil. So I don't know about you, but I am not interested in just partial victory in areas of my life. But I felt like that this was a year and this was a fast where God would give us in some areas of our life complete victory. How many of you would like to see in some area of your life some battle that's been kind of ongoing? You would love to see a complete victory in your family or in your finances or in, in, in some issue on the job. You know, God knows how to give his people complete victory. And we're fasting for complete victory. I want complete victory over the devil, the world, and the flesh. Complete victory over our body, our soul, and our spirit over habits, over addictions, over lust, over bondages. We can see complete victory come and things that God sets you free from that you never pick up again, that you never go back to again. That, I believe, is God's will for our lives. Complete victory over our desires. Complete victory over our emotions. Complete victory, in other words, over depression and worry and fear and stuff that our emotions being so out of, out of control. Complete victory over our actions. And so when you read this story, it, it, it lets us know that God said, I want to give you, Joash, God said through the prophet Elisha, I want to give you complete victory, utterly destroy your enemy, the Syrians. Not partial victory. You've been having partial victory in this area. But I want you to have this year in that this story happened. He said, I want it to be the year of complete victory. And we're fasting. We are not going to settle for partial victory this year. Joash was king of Israel and he heard that Elisha was dying. He rushed to the room where he was dying and the prophet looked at him and he understood, even though he had neglected the man of God and even rejected his, his, his teaching sometimes, he respected the man of God, and he ran to his bedside. Do you know that everybody needs a man of God in their life? Everybody needs a preacher. Everybody needs someone who won't just tell you what you want to hear, but they will tell you what you need to hear. And if they're true... 
person that God has put in your life, they won't just make you feel good, they will also challenge you. And Elisha was the man of God, and Joash runs into the room. I was thinking about how that Elisha, the Bible said, had a double portion of the anointing of Elijah. But before he received that, there's an interesting scripture in 2 Kings 2 that said he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces and he took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him. Notice he had to take off before he could put on a double portion anointing. And we have to rid ourselves of some things before God will send the double portion anointing that Elisha had. And I believe that God wants this anointing for complete victory that comes on us, comes when we rid ourselves. He had to rid himself of what he had on and then put on that mantle that was representing the double portion. I want you to know that this is a year that we need to rid ourselves of besetting sin, rid ourselves of offense and unforgiveness, rid ourselves of pride and arrogance. On this fast, let's put off some things so we can put on some things. Rid ourselves of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life and habits that we know that we have filth in the spirit that you know your spirit can get filthy we talk about the flesh being filthy but sometimes we allow our spirits to get contaminated with with things that we pick up and and hurts and offenses but when you put that stuff off and that's what you do when you fast you humble yourself you're ripping pride off and arrogance off you're humbling yourself when you're fasting you're saying I'm putting off this stuff so I can put on that double portion of your presence and your power. I was reading the story the other day about uh, how that Joshua told the children of Israel to cross the Jordan. And the Bible said that when they got in the middle of the river as God made the water stand up on both sides, that he gave them this commandment. He said, carry stones from the place, listen to the words, where men's feet, where the priest's feet stood firm. In other words, if you are going to have complete victory, notice that they were to pick up stones where the priest's feet stood firm. They were standing in the middle of a river that had parted, and God told them where they are standing firm, that's where you pick up stones and you place them on the bank, and so that when your children come generations later and say, what do these stones mean? You tell them that's how God brought you over, and it came from men taking a stand, a, a, a firm stand. Sometimes we need to understand the power of taking a firm stand. A firm foundation of standing and saying, I'm not drawing back. I'm not giving in. And the thing that I heard the Lord say in my spirit, it's when we take a firm stand that we are able to take stones and place them on the banks for other generations to pick up. It's when you take a firm stand that you lay up because it's our convictions, it's our personal convictions, and even about fasting and prayer, we are picking up stones that will be passed down to our children. They will come by, and they will even talk about the fast that mom and dad went on, the fast that we went on at Free Chapel. For after we're dead and gone, we're going to have stones that our kids will pick up because we took a firm stand, a firm stand, and said, we are declaring the next 21 days will be days where we turn our family, we turn the atmosphere of our home, we turn our lives, we turn our hearts, we turn all that we are toward God, and we empty ourselves and we say, Lord, send that double portion anointing. And it happens when you take a firm stand. You can't just kind of fast and kind of, when well, maybe I'll see how it goes. You take a firm stand or you won't fast successfully. You stand there and you say, I'm doing this. I'm, you make up your mind, I'm going three days or seven days on the total fast. If that's what God tells you to do, or whatever he tells you to do, take a firm stand. And remember, when you come out of that stand, you're going to have some stones. And you know what? It's going to affect the next generation. 
It does. You are never just fasting for one generation when you fast. God is laying. Your children notice it. Every, you don't do it to be noticed to people, but people in your family that live with you see that you're not doing that. And it, whether they understand it or not, they, there's stones being put in their spirit that no matter where they go and how old they get, they won't ever forget dad and mom fasted. The scripture said that the young man heard the prophet as he laid on his bed give him some instructions. He said, pick up bows and arrow. He said, pick the bow up and pick the arrow up and walk over to the window and open the window. Here comes my Joash. Everybody welcome Joash. So there's the young man and there's the old prophet. And the old prophet says, take bows and take arrows. And then he said, go to the window and open the window. Because what was going on outside the window was the battle with the Syrians. They could see the battle from the position of the prophet's bedroom. And he said, take bow and take arrows. You know what to do with that, don't you? He said, pull it back. Aim it. You don't look like you're going to shoot anybody. Look like you're going to shoot somebody. And this is what blessed me about this story. It said that the prophet got up out of his sick bed, walked over to the young king, and put his hands on the boy's hands. Hands on hands. The strength of the young, the direction of the old. The zeal of the young, the wisdom of the old. But I don't want you just to see that. Here's what I heard the Lord say in my spirit. The hands on hands represents supernatural hands coming on natural hands. Supernatural hands coming on natural hands. And when you fast and you pray, it's not just you standing there, but the Holy Spirit is the supernatural hands. And there you are trying to fight and win, and there you are dealing with issues, but suddenly there comes hands on your hands. And it's the supernatural. See, Elisha had a double portion. Elisha had the anointing. Elisha represents the supernatural power of God. And we cannot fight and win in our own might and our own power. It requires hands on hands to raise a family and get them to heaven. It requires hands on your hands to build a successful business and do what God has called you to do. It requires hands on hands to have a ministry that touches people and saves lives. I'm scared to death to go into this year just with my hands and my bow and my arrow and what I think I can do into the battle. I thank God that if we'll fast and pray, His hands will come on our hands and He will give us complete victory. I need somebody to shout if you believe He's given you His help and His hands on your hands. I want you to get it. I want you to understand it. Because what is going to happen as we fast is God is going to put His hands on our hands. The day that I stop preaching with the anointing, the day that I stop preaching with passion, is the day I want to stop preaching. I'm telling you, we have enough church with just what we can do. We need His hands on our hands. And today, I want you to hear the instruction. He told that boy to go to the window. And I hear in the Lord, my heart, God saying, I'm going to give you a window of opportunity. But it's going to take my hands on your hands. 
to do what I have given you the opportunity to do. And he said, shoot. I want you to understand that God will not give you an opportunity that goes around the obstacles. When he said open it eastward, it was because that's where the battle was. He was staring. When he opened that window, he was looking right in the face of the Syrian army. And God will not give you a window of opportunity without giving you adversaries that will try to stop you from doing what God's telling you to do. But there has to come a point where you take the arrow and you don't just look at it and say, what an opportunity, but boy, look at the adversaries, but you actually shoot. You say to the devil, I'm not going around you. I'm not going over you. I'm going through you. I am going to see complete victory in the mighty name of Jesus in this area of my life. Come on and praise God, somebody. God will not redirect you around your adversary. He'll take you through the battlefield and he shot the arrow and God through the prophet said now I'm going to give you complete victory over the Assyrians and here's the mistake the boy made he basically folded his arms and said well if God's going to do it he's going to do it Reminds me of the story of Jesus on the cross saying, it is finished. I have defeated and humiliated Satan. But we think that's all there is. He did it, but then the Bible said, the prophet said, take arrows. And he had three arrows because he smote the ground three times. He said, take arrows. And he said, smite the ground, strike the ground. And the Bible said that the prophet took those three arrows, and, or, or the young king did, and he hit the ground, struck the ground three times, and stopped. And I'm telling you, this is what I felt. Elisha looked at him and said, if you would have given it a greater effort with those three arrows I gave you, if you wouldn't have just hit three times and struck three times kind of passively, but if you would have taken those three arrows and you would have struck over and over and over and over and over, I would have given you complete victory over your enemy. But because you didn't give real effort, you just kind of sort of said, I'll kind of, and here's the three arrows. Matthew chapter 6 said, when you fast, when you pray, when you give, he said there are three things that you will do if you're a Christian, the duty of a Christian. He talked about seeking first the kingdom of heaven in that chapter. Seek first the kingdom and when you fast, when you pray, and when you give. And here's what I felt. I felt that we, we know to fast, and we know to pray, and we know we ought to be givers. But it's when we don't give it our full effort. The 21-day fast is going to happen, but some of you, you know, you're kind of passive about it, and you're kind of, I don't know, I'll see how it goes, and maybe I'll do it, and maybe I won't, and, you know, and, and the Lord would say to you, I want to give you complete victory. I want you to grab these arrows. That fasting arrow is the same arrow Jesus used when he came to a face-to-face -face confrontation with the devil. And he didn't just tap, tap, tap. He took it and he struck the enemy for 40 days with that arrow of fasting. It hit Satan every day. It hit him. And every day we're fasting for 21 days, we are pounding the powers of hell and pounding the gates of hell. And we are saying we are going to give it our full effort. That arrow of fasting is what Esther used when Haman wanted to annihilate the people of God, and she fasted for three days. 
She took that arrow. I'm glad she didn't just tap with it. I'm glad she didn't just kind of say, well, you know, uh, maybe I'll fast and I'll see how long that, that I can do it. And, you know, I really, you have to take a firm stand. You have to say, you know, I set how long I'm going to do the total fast, how long I'm going to do the Daniel fast. You know, we're going to go 21 days, but I, you work out your own little pattern in there. But the bottom line is you don't kind of say, well, let me see how I feel. And if I feel okay, and I'll probably do you have to grab those arrows and say there's going to be some prayer going on the next 21 days I'm going to have a time of prayer a place of prayer there's going to be some fasting going on there's no if ands and buts about it there's going to be some giving there's going to be some fasting there's going to God I'm intense I'm giving my full effort and God said if you had just taken the arrows of deliverance that I already gave you and took it serious I would have given you complete victory I want you to understand that if you're going to fast, you might as well go on and make up your mind. These three areas means they were three areas. The three strikes were three areas they didn't give enough effort to. He didn't give enough effort to it. And that's what I'm saying to you today. Is I'm saying that many of you know about fasting and praying and giving, but you got to get focused on it. That's why this is so powerful. These 21 days, it's like I'm, you, you, you grab the arrows. You get intense about it. You say, God, I'm coming after you with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul, with all of my strength. Put all your effort in it. Put everything you've got in it. Don't enter your fast casually. Don't enter it with a hit or miss attitude. Plan to succeed. I know when I'm going to eat, and nothing's going to make me eat in between. I've got my hand on that arrow, and I'm not going to let it go, and I'm pounding the ground because God has given me an amount that I need to do on the total fast or just liquid fast. And I know what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to alter that. Well, I think I'll try it till I get hungry, and at the first sign of discomfort, I'll take that as the Lord leading me and releasing me. <laughs> Don't enter into it with a hit or miss attitude. I'm almost through. But you have to make a commitment up front to pray, up front to give, up front to fast. You have to make a commitment. Not try and see how long you can hold out. I tell you, the Holy Spirit will partner with you. His hand will come on your hands. Glory to God, I feel that in my soul. We have become so politically correct in the church that we think all God's capable of is what our pitiful little hands can do. But wonder if what would happen if the Holy Spirit put His hands on our hands and then we prayed for somebody and then we had church and then we sung our songs. Wonder what would happen in your business if the Holy Spirit put His hand on your hands and He started to prosper the work of your hands because His hands has come on your hands. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going to have hands on hands. His hand is coming on your hands through this fast. Spiritual passion has become politically correct. We don't want to be called fanatics. We don't want to be called religious nuts. Well, I'm just here to tell you, I don't want to be called a boring Christian either. I want to be, I want God. That's what I'm fasting for. I want God to tear me up. I want to cry again. I want to weep again. I want to be broken. I want to be in God's presence. I want to feel His Spirit. Call me a fanatic, a freak, a nut. No, I want more out of religion than sitting on a seat and listening to people talk and leaving. Anybody want more? Anybody want complete victory? In the overflow and all over this room, just stand to your feet. Open up your mouth, and for the next 30 seconds, I want you to lift your hands high. I want you to turn your heart toward God 
And I want you to see his hands touching your hands. Nail-scarred hands touching your hands. The Lord would have me say to you, you're not in this alone. This is not just your battle. But his hands are going to come on your hands. And if you think you could do something with your hands before, wait till you get a double portion anointing this year on your hands. He will bless the work of your hands through this fast. If this program has touched you today, I want to hear from you. Specifically, I feel like people are watching right now that you're ready to make that decision. You have been watching this program and the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. It's time. It's time right where you are. You don't have to be in a church. You can be sitting right there in that room where you're watching this telecast and Jesus Christ will meet you there. Invite him today. Pray this prayer. Say these words from your heart. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender to you today. I want you to be Lord and Savior, and I give you that place in my heart. In Jesus' name, wash me and cleanse me and give me a brand new start. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. I receive your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I would love to hear from you. We have a team that is standing by. There's a prayer number. Or you can go online and communicate with us that way. Whatever you do, tell someone what has happened to you today. Write us today. Let us know what Christ has done in your life. Thank you for watching this program. We'll see you next time on Kingdom Connection. Start your year off on the right path, seeking God's best in 2014. This month, we've prepared a brand new resource of encouragement and inspiration in this vibrant gift book. This beautiful work of art is a daily reminder of encouraging thoughts, life lessons, and scripture. The Gift Is In You is available for your best gift of $35 or more this month. And when you order this month, we'll also include the Clean Slate Confession Cards for 21 days of God's promises to build your faith and expectation. Ask for the Gift Is In You kit today. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.